Argol Tal is one of the most iconic characters in the 31st millennium, and by far and obviously the less dickish of the world bearers. And while Forge World recently put out a model form that looks pretty good, it was missing his iconic custodian weapons, and I felt the wings were a bit too small, so I had to go about converting my own. In this video, I'm going to show you how, starting with the iconic Guardian Spear. As a side note, I also find the official Guardian Spear models a bit too big and chunky and just awkward for my taste, so I decided to convert his weapon out of a Phoenix Spear from the Emperor's Children kit, and a Bolt Pistol from the Blood Angel Sanguinary Guard plastic kit. Most Bolt Pistols should work here, but I really like the one from the Sanguinary Guard kit as it has a drum magazine off to the side, which I think just looks better. I started off by removing the Marine's arm attached to the Bolt Pistol with my clippers and hobby knife. These first couple of cuts were pretty rough, and I just wanted to remove the power armored portions as quickly as possible, leaving only the weapon behind. Once the arm was removed, I started on incorporating the boulder into the blade itself. My goal here was to make it look like one cohesive weapon as opposed to two bits randomly slapped together, so I knew I'd have to make a very snug and natural looking fit between the two pieces. To do this, I went through a fairly iterative process where I would cut away a small piece of the weapon, check its fit against the spear, and then adjust my cuts slightly and try again. It might sound obvious, but it's far easier to remove material and add it back in, and even though we can use green stuff to fill in gaps later on, I find that I never get quite the same look as the plastic components. As the fitting was getting closer to what I was looking for, I found myself scraping smaller and smaller amounts of plastic away with each iteration. This is some fairly detailed knife work, so I'd highly recommend using a fresh blade if you're going to do something similar yourself. After a number of rounds of this cut, check, recut cycle, I got to a place where I was very happy with how the two weapons fit together, and I glued them with super glue. There was a little bit of a gap here, but it was easily filled. I also used a small blob of green stuff to bulk out the connection of the bolter to the spear and make it look like one unified weapon. I'm going to get into more detail on how to sculpt with green stuff later on when I do the wings on this model, but for now, just remember to always keep your tools wet with either Vaseline or what I'm doing here with water. I'm really happy with how the Guardian Spear has turned out so far, but I felt that the weapon looked pretty unbalanced. There was too much, I don't know, weight at the front end of this spear, with the bolter portion dominating the silhouette and looking a little bit off compared to the rest of the weapon. So, I decided to add a little more detail to this spear in the form of even larger Imperial Eagle wings. I had to rummage around my bit box a bit here for the perfect bit, but eventually I found two large wing pieces which I believe came from the old Dark Angels Veterans Kit. I didn't want to actually consume these bits for this project though, as there's a good chance I'll be making more of these spears in the future for another project, and only had one set of these, so I made a green stuff mold out of them. If you're not familiar with green stuff molds, they're pretty much a simple one-sided mold that you make by pressing your bit into a blob of epoxy putty, such as green stuff. Then, once the green stuff dries, you can remove your bit and press another blob of green stuff into the mold to make a copy of it. There are a few nuances here, like you need to ensure that you use some kind of lubricant, such as water, to ensure that the green stuff does not stick to the mold, but overall, it's a pretty easy way to duplicate bits. Once my copies were dry, I cut them away from the excess putty using a sharp X-Acto blade and trimmed them to fit snugly against the bolt pistol. All that's left now is a little bit of gap filling and the spear is done. Next up after the spear, I decided to move on to Aggie T's iconic wings, which I wanted to do prior to attaching the arms so the weapons did not get in the way of the wings. For this, I used a pair of wings from their Flesh Eater Quartz Crypt Horror Kit, as I felt that these larger wigs were suitably big enough to actually look like they could lift a 10 foot tall Space Marine Demon Hybrid, as opposed to the tiny ones that come in the official kit. The first of these wings went on easily enough, and all I really had to do was remove the backpack bents from the Gal Vorback model, drill a hole into the wing arm, and pin the two together. The other was a bit trickier, however, as the original model had its arm outstretched, not bent like I wanted it, and I couldn't find a good way to attach it to the Gal Vorback model in any way that looked good. So I decided the only appropriate course of action was to chop off the arm at the elbow and re-sculpt it. Seeing as I never actually sculpted an arm before, I was a little bit nervous here, but I had gone too far in the conversion to turn back now. After the lower arm was removed and any residual plastic was scraped away, I drilled a hole into the backpack and attached a paperclip bent to about the angle I expected the arm to be at. This paperclip will serve as kind of the skeletal structure for the arm I'm about to sculpt, and will help to ensure that the wing stays attached to the backpack as I sculpt the rest of the arm. I then drilled a corresponding hole into the plastic wing and attached it into the position I would like it to be in. I added a little bit of epoxy sculpt around this paperclip as well to provide additional support and structure to the wing for me to sculpt off of. 
I used epoxy sculpt here instead of green stuff as epoxy sculpt dries far firmer and should be a better base to sculpt off of. While waiting for the epoxy sculpt on the wing arm to dry, I decided to attach the sword arm next. And this is done by simply taking a sanguinary guard power sword and cutting off the arm right below the shoulder. I then drilled a small hole in this to attach a paper clip to, and then drilled a corresponding hole in the Gal Vorbach model's shoulder and is attached at the correct angle. This pinning step is kind of optional, but I think it makes a lot of sense to do here as the surface area that I'm gluing the arm onto is a little bit rough as there's this carved out place underneath the Gal Vorbach's arm. So the pin helps to stabilize it and provide some insurance won't get knocked off during gameplay. The other arm was done in much the same way, just I used an arm from the Emperor's Children Phoenix Terminator kit, as I felt that the larger arm would fit better with the hand I'd already chosen. As mentioned previously, I have very little experience with using green stuff outside of simple gap filling, so this re-sculpting project for the arm was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I figured that by breaking it down into simple shapes, I get at least a decent looking arm that would pass anyone's casual glance, and I'd learned a lot doing so as well. So to start with, I took some pure green stuff and applied a small bulge over what the, I guess, bicep would be on the wing and gradually started smoothing it down. The key here really was to make sure that I was getting the general shapes right and always add more detail and other shapes on top of this later on. It's also pretty important here to ensure that your tools are wet as otherwise the green stuff is going to stick to your sculpting tools and it'll be impossible to get a smooth finish. Next up, I keep on adding more of these kind of smaller cylindrical shapes to represent more of the muscle mass and gradually build up smaller and smaller bits until I get to a point I'm happy with. It is key here though to make sure that all of the various green stuff parts are fully dried before we go on to the next, or you have a very high probability of ruining the work you've already done. This means this process takes quite a while. I probably spent three to four days actually doing this between sculpting on a small bit of detail and then letting it dry. But I think it's really important to take your time here and be patient as otherwise you'll have a subpar result. It would probably be pretty boring for me to go through every single step-by-step -step shape of the muscular that I sculpted here, especially as I'm, well, not really a good sculptor and you'll probably learn more from a lot of other videos out there on YouTube. So instead, I'm just gonna leave you with this, that I would highly recommend just taking a look at what's on the other arm you're already trying to copy off of and just doing that in reverse. Sure, it'll look exactly correct, but you'll get a pretty good facsimile of it and it'll look good from across the tabletop. For the last little bit of the wing, I actually made a green stuff mold of the wing membrane as I damaged it when I was removing the arm piece earlier on on this wing. This step is very similar to the molds I did for the wings on the Guardian Spear, and follows the same basic process. Once it was dry, I glued on this casted piece of green stuff onto the wing and feathered it in a little bit with some more green stuff to smooth the gaps, and then I was done. For the last little detail of the model, I wanted Argos Tarl's base to look like a scene from the 500 Worlds, so I decided to use a plastic cake pillar as a foundation for my ruined base. I hacked this up with my hobby knife and then pressed it into some epoxy sculpt to make it look like it was sunken into the ground and crumbling away. I then used a little more epoxy sculpt to fill in the gaps in the column and to make it look like it was a solid piece of stone as opposed to a hollow plastic tube. I then covered the base with a little bit of textured paint, this time from Vallejo, and the model's pretty much done and onto painting. So yeah, this is my first conversion video. Hope you all enjoyed it as it was a bit interesting for me to do. Um, but I really enjoy doing these kind of models and these kind of videos and tying them into a painting video. So if you like this, please make sure you leave a comment below saying you want to see more of these kinds of styles of videos. And if you haven't seen it yet and are interested, I'll throw a link to the how I painted this Argyle Paul video uh, right over here on the screen for you to check out. As always, thanks for watching and hobby on.